Good afternoon, brethren. This is Big Judah coming to you guys from California. Before I begin, I want to give all praises to the Most High, Yahweh. I want to acknowledge the earthly mother, who is wisdom, who is the Holy Spirit. I also want to acknowledge Yahweh Shai. I pray that the Most High uh, blesses this lesson and gives us knowledge and understanding of what's happened to us in the past, the things that are transpiring right now in the present, and the things soon to come on the earth in the future. Been um, busy studying. Most High has been downloading a lot of information to me, taking a lot of notes. Just uh, some more revelations. I'm revel revealing some things uh, that I didn't quite put together at first, and you know, and a lot of this information is just coming together. The puzzle is um, becoming more clear. Before I get into the lesson today, I kind of want to talk about some of the things that's been transpiring in our nation I and mean, even worldwide, looking at the um, at the stock market. And we all know how it's manipulated. Man, usually, you know, if this place was to continue, they would just continue on with the manipulation. But right now, I think it's gotten to the point where we're getting to the end of our sentence, our captivity, and the Most High is showing that with these uh, gyrations in the uh, stock market. And I was watching a, a video by a guy, Bull Polney, who's been kind of predicting a lot of these things. And he was showing some graphs about how, um, you know, once the stock market goes below, below these support lines that it crashes. He was showing how that happened in 2000. It dropped a, under a certain lumber, a certain line, it crashed. In 2000, and it crashed for years. And then it did it again in uh, 2007, into 2008. And it just happened again uh, in the last uh, month or so. And all the other nations and all their stock markets are just crashing. They're already below that support line, which means they're going to be continuing in this bear market, you know, going down for the next few years. And we all know that pretty much once this happens, as far as there's no coming back from this, you know, so we, we know now that we have come to, you know, the end of Esau's reign worldwide. You know, and it's first, it started right now with the uh, financial collapse, you know, and it's going to go into many other, you know, it's going to go into the military, it's going to go into societal collapse as well. And I think at this time, the Most High has been giving me some information on how um, some of these uh, this uh, chaos is going to unfold. And we're going to get into it with, uh, in a little bit with uh, other scriptures of uh, scriptures from the Bible as well, some from the other books as well. And I'm probably going to end up doing this on a few different videos. I have so many notes that there's no way I can get it all done in just one video because it's just a lot of information. So we're going to kind of be just putting all the puzzle pieces together. Now, I noticed something else that went on was there was uh, all these lights showing up. And I guess in, in uh, New York, there was um, some blue lights. And, of course, they tried to play it off like it was some uh, Transformers blowing up. But there were some accounts of these this blue lights going on in the sky for like over 45 minutes. And in this morning, I found another uh, video that was showing like a, a orb that was actually in the sky. I'm not sure if the, if the picture was doctored or not, but I mean, it looked uh, pretty real. But it's just amazing because you said you're seeing all these anomalies in the sky. You're seeing all this upheaval here in the financial markets. You know, and a lot of people are now just predicting, they know, well, this is going to be, this is the collapse. This is, this is going to happen. But where they all mess up on is the why this is happening. Why is it happening? Why did all this, all this, these, uh, you know, events starting up right now at the end of their 2018? Why are all these things escalating and ramping up now as we get into their 2019? They don't make those connections. And as I kind of talk about some of the um, things I'm going to talk about today, um, you'll start to see, I'll, I'll kind of let you know, I've been doing some research and I listen to a couple other, you know, these, uh, Gentiles videos trying to break down, you know, some things in Second Ezra, some things in the Bible. Um, but of course, they always, you know, get the people wrong. If you get the people wrong, then everything you have after that is not going to, it's not going to be correct. Because, you know, everything is based off of the suffering of the Most High's chosen seed. If you don't have the chosen seed correct, then everything that you have after that is, is null and void. It, it means nothing. Now, 
what we're going to talk about is um, some of Revelation 18. We're going to link that up with some second Esdras. Okay, and it's talking about the destruction that's coming. You know, and it seems like, you know, when we were we caught into the truth, it's always talked about America being destroyed. America is being destroyed, you know, at the end because of what's happened to us and all these sins that they've done, you know, the sinful things they've done to us that this whole nation, this whole, you know, part of the world has just has to be destroyed. And I believe that as well for a while because I wasn't, my mind wasn't opened up to a lot of other information that I've been uh, privy to recently about this being our land. You know, and the thing is, is that the sins that were committed to us were not just committed to on committed on us here. We were scattered to all four corners of the earth, and we've had a horrible, you know, crimes committed to us everywhere. So then, it would make sense that if there was crimes committed um, to on us everywhere, that this whole world would be destroyed, not just this continent that we're on right now. Okay. Before the Europeans got here, this place was a paradise. And there are many accounts that when the Europeans got here, they were just astounded with what they saw. It was just beauty that they had never seen before. And I was watching the movie Avatar. I've been watching Avatar. It's one of my favorite movies. But when you have more knowledge and understanding of the scriptures and even the other, the other scriptures, and you understand about our land and this being our land, it starts to even make more sense, you know, because they try to, they put a lot of truth in these movies. And I was watching um, Avatar last night and, um, you know, when Jake first uh, ran away from the animal and he was out here by himself and he was just looking at how beautiful everything was, you know, how beautiful, like I said, everything, you took a step and it lit up. The, uh, the plants, they seemed like they were alive. Everything was vibrant and alive, you know. And when he actually got in contact with the natives, the natives, you know, had that, that great connection with the earth, with the living um, the plants, that a connection with the animals. And they lived together. They respected one another. And I think that's the way the Most High had set this whole place up, you know, for us to live in harmony together with everything that was here, not to sit here and try to, um, you know, uh, just try to gr get more than everybody else, you know, you tried to try to get as much you know, money, resources, gold, silver, that wasn't in our nature. And when they, and when the Europeans got here, they noticed that, that w we were very giving people. And even today, even after all of the things that these people have put us through, most of us still are very giving and very forgiving. That's just like the spirit that's actually put in us. And they know that. And that's why they put these churches in all of our communities and they push that on us all the time at the churches. Forgive, turn the other cheek. You know, it'll get better for you someday because they know how our spirits are. They know that we're a very um, forgiving people. You know, we, we want to be, we want to work together. We want to, um, you know, give you the shirt off of our back. We want to work together. You know, we wanted to live um, peaceably with people because that's the spirit that's actually been put on us. You know, the spirit of like hating each other and hating, you know, getting, you know, if someone has something better than me, I, I want that. I don't like him looking evil at my eye and my, at my brother. You know, those are things that were taught to us. But that's not really something that's actually necessarily innate. It's not really like in our nature to be like that. But that's what we were taught. That's how we were, you know, brought up over centuries and centuries through slavery, through education. You know, but before that, if you start looking at the movie like Avatar, they're trying to show you. Look, I mean, you look at it, how the natives worked together, how they were, like I said, they connected with it. With the, um, I love when they get on the horse and they connect with their hair and they connect with the, with the um, and you can feel with the animal and you could feel like the, what the animals feel. You can see what the animals seen. It's just amazing, like the connection that the people had. With the um, with the animals, okay, and so like I said, when you're, and we were like we were a certain way before that, and when they said the Europeans got here, we took care of them, okay, but we've been taught in this country, you know, that because of what they came over here and did to us, that all of a sudden now, 
the whole earth, uh, or well, at least our inheritance, is going to be destroyed because of what they did, because they came over here and they did all these things to us. So therefore, our land is now going to be destroyed. Okay, and like I said, and, and nuclear fire. And like I said, is that true? I'm not sure. You know, we've been servants in our land before. My daughter was actually studying and she uh, came across this, uh, this verse here I'm gonna share with you guys. So if we, this, is, this has happened before where we've been servants in our land before. We've been abused in our land before. Did the Most High just destroy it because we were servants in our land? No, because our land is still here. And the Most High ultimately was the one who sent these other nations against us to teach us a lesson, not necessarily to destroy our inheritance, but to teach us a lesson. So let's look at this example here real fast in the book of Nehemiah. Let me see here. Nehemiah chapter 9, verses 36 through 38. Behold, we are servants this day, and for the land that thou gavest unto our fathers to eat the fruit thereof, and the good thereof, behold, we are servants in it. And it yieldeth much increase unto the kings whom thou hast set over us because of our sins. Also, they have dominion over our bodies and over our cattle at their pleasure, and we are in great distress. And because of all this, we make a sure covenant and write it, and our princes, Levites, and priests seal unto it okay so all the way back in nehemiah we were put in slavery to the other nations in our own land and like i said it said we were you know that we were it was because of what we did okay so let me see here let me read it again nehemiah 9 36 Behold, we are servants in this day, and for the land that thou gavest unto our fathers to eat the fruit thereof, and of good thereof. Behold, we are servants in it. So we are servants in our own land. And it yieldeth much increase unto the kings, whom thou hast set over us because of our sins. So these people were set over us because of our sins, even here in the book of Nehemiah. Okay. Also, they have dominion over our bodies and over our cattle at their pleasure, and we are in great distress. So this is nothing new that we've been put in, um, into captivity, even new, we've been put into captivity in our own lands. But did the Most High just destroy all the lands? No. He destroyed the people that were on our lands that had us in captivity. And I feel that like that's what's going to happen again this time. That the Most High is going to destroy the people who have put us in to captivity, not necessarily destroy the land. Okay, so like I said, this is a good example of what happened in the past, and things don't ever change. They just repeat themselves. So the same thing happened this time, except this time we were put into captivity to the Edomites and the other nations, and these, uh, these people went way overboard in our punishment. That was, the, that was the main difference. You know, from the Greeks, the Romans, and the revived Roman Empire, they've just gone deep, you know, they just gone way overboard with the things that they did to us. Now, today I'm going to present a possible alternate ending that I feel is a possibility using scripture and history as far as what's going to happen here, um, over here and how this is going to go down. Like I said, I can't get all into all of it all today because it's just way too much, but we'll get into some of it. All right, here we go. We're going to look at Revelations, Revelation chapter 18. Now, like I said, we've been scattered all over the whole, the whole world, the four corners. But the vast majority of our oppression was here on this continent, from, you know, North America and, you know, the Mexico area all the way down to South America. So let me get that real quick.
book of Revelation, chapter 18. Now, like I said, the other nations came over here and found paradise, just like in the book, uh, I was sorry, the movie Avatar. You know, and the people came here with superior weaponry. They were superior weaponry and in uh, and technology. And then they were here looking for resources, just like in that movie. Okay, just like in the movie Avatar. You know, we lived peaceably, you know, and they came over here with their technology and weapons wanting our resources. And they didn't care what they had to do in order to get it. Okay, so that's exactly the same thing that happened in the, in the movie Avatar. Okay, and uh, but here, you know, they stole our people, they stole the labor, and they stole the land and the resources. Okay, and they were made rich by selling our resources. All right, and that's exactly what happened um, to us over here. Okay, or worldwide. Now. So this picture, I kind of like this. So I wanted to kind of look at this because this is like a cycle that happens to our people again and again and again. Israel disobeys. Israel is oppressed. That's what's been happening these last 400 years. Israel cries out. Well, that's what's happening right now. First, we had to realize who we were. Okay. After we realized who we were, then we had to realize the ways of our fathers. Once we start going back to the ways of our fathers, then we start asking for the Most High to, um, to set us back, to, you know, to revive us. To you know, bring us back to the, our original state, to redeem us. Okay, and as he started that whole part, started that process, was letting us know who we are, letting us know who he is, and let us know about who our what our inher our inheritance is. Okay, Most High raises up a deliverer, and that's what's going to be happening, and then Israel will be delivered. All right, now. Yes, now we're going to go ahead and get into this real quick. Israel has been awakened, like I said, and we've been coming to the end of our punishment. All right, and we're going to get into this right now. Revelations 18, 4 through 8. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. That was the awakening. For her sins have reached unto heaven, as the Most High hath remembered her iniquities. And it goes with the book of Enoch and the angels uh, going back and forth and delivering their reports. All right, six, reward her even as she rewarded you and double unto her according to her works and the cup which she hath filled, fill to her double. So she's going to get double for what she did to us. How much um, has she hath glorified herself and lived deliciously, so much torment and sorrow give her. For she, she saith in her heart, I sit a queen, and am no widow, and shall see no sorrow. Now, how does she glorify herself and live deliciously? By taking our lands, taking our resources, and taking our labor. Right? So we got that so far? Let's go to eight. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire, for strong is the Lord God, who judges her. Now, like I said, she's going to be plagued. She's going to be destroyed with fire. Doesn't necessarily mean that the whole land is going to be destroyed with fire. Just like I showed you those pictures of how the Most High was destroying their residences up there in paradise, but everything around was left alone. Same kind of a thing. Okay? So, like I said, this is where the divergence goes. Okay? Of beliefs. It's, it's through this interpretation. Most teach that America will be utterly destroyed and that no one will be here. Okay? But I believe that the people who oppressed us will be destroyed and removed. Then the land will be rejuvenated like it, all, like it has been. When we've gone through our oppressions before here, you know, he didn't destroy the land utterly. He, you know, got rid of the people who were oppressing us, and then he rejuvenated the land. I feel like that's what's going to be happening again. And if you think about it, if you watch the movie Avatar, if you notice at the end what happened, they kicked the colonizers out. And some of them were allowed to stay in paradise, the ones that helped. So that lets you know that they know. They didn't destroy the entire planet. They just got kicked off the off the planet after you know the, after the you know the uh, aliens uh, took over, took their land back, took their their uh, planet back. They kicked the other people out. Now that's what's going to happen again here. 
because the Most High is going to kick the people, the oppressors, out of here. Okay, and then they're going to be, and they're going to go back to their lands, the ones that survive, the ones that have been uh, supporting us, the ones the Most High says, you know, just like you go to Isaiah fourteen and one and two. Let's read, let's read that real quick. The ones the Most High has deems that are going to be able to stay. Thus, you know, those I said Isaiah fourteen. And plus, many people are going to want to stay once they realize the truth. Isaiah 14 and 1. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land. So we're going to be giving our land back. We're going to be giving our possession of our land back. We're going to be in, in, you know, in control of our land again. Okay? So set them in their own land. And the strangers shall be joined with them. And they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. So some of the strangers are going to cleave to us and want to stay here. And the Most High will dictate who that is. And the people shall take them and bring them to their place. And the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids. And they shall take them captives, whose captives they were. And they shall rule over their oppressors. Some people are going to be staying here as slaves. Depending on how, you know, however the Most High decides to do all this. Okay. And we've already talked about how the Most High has made provisions on how to purify the land. Once the land has been defiled, if he's just going to just destroy it all and wipe it off the map and no one's going to be here, then why make provisions in the, in the scriptures on how to purify the land? Because there's no, there's no need for provisions to purify the land if he's just going to destroy it all. Because he's not planning on destroying the land. He plans on purifying the land after all the things that they did to defile it. And let's read that really quick. Numbers 35. Verse 33. So ye shall not pollute the land wherein ye are, for blood it defileth the land. So they spilled much of our blood defiling the land here. Okay? And the land cannot be cleansed of the blood that is shed therein, but by the blood of him that shed it. So the ones who shed the blood, our blood, their blood has to be shed on the land in order to purify it. So the Most High already made provisions on how he's going to purify it. And that's exactly what he's about to do. And as you can tell, all these other nations are already turning on this country. You know, the United States does not have the respect that it used to have. The other nations are kind of punking them. You know, he, they, the United States says they want to do something. They just ignore them. It's kind of like the, uh, you know, the bad kid, the, the kid who just has like a really uh, horrible uh, attitude that people just ignore. You know, the crazy kid who just screams and makes a bunch of noise and everyone just kind of ignores his ah, let him have his tantrum. When he's done, then, then he'll be calm. He'll be calm and we'll talk to him. That's kind of like how they're treating the United States now. And they keep saying, well, we're going we're gonna to put sanctions on. Okay, they're going to say, we're going to put sanctions on you if you don't do what we want. They're like, okay, we just won't use a dollar anymore. Or we're going to, if, if you don't do what we want, we're going to come over there and nuke you. Okay. You know, we're going to come attack you. They're like, okay, go ahead. You know, so except they don't have the same, the United States does not have the same kind of power and clout that it used to have. Because the other nations are about to sacrifice this country because a lot of the other nations already know that this country is, they already know that this is our land and they already know the Most High is about to take it back for his people. It's just a lot of the people here don't realize that. And they still think it's going to go back to the way things were before. And that's never going to happen again. Okay? Let's continue reading some more of this uh, Revelations 18 and kind of breaking some more things down. Revelations 18, we'll start at 9. And the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and live deliciously with her shall bewail her and lament for her when they, uh, when they shall see the smoke of her burning. See, all these other nations have made all this money off of our land and off of our resources for hundreds and hundreds of years. Let's look at the things that they were actually taking from this land and see if this is exactly what they've been doing here. Continue with... Uh, 10. Standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgment come. And the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her, for no man buyeth their merchandise anymore. So all these merchants worldwide are all going to be, you know, bewailing, you know, they're going to be depressed because they're going to see that um, this area, this country now, they're not going to be able to rape and rob and steal its resources anymore. The game's up. 
the jig is up. All the all, because they made all their wealth through, you know, the the uh, torment that they could take did to this land, through all of the um, stealing of our resources, they were made, were made rich, and that's all coming to an end. And that's why all these people are all depressed and upset because now they're seeing the end of their cash cow is all coming to an end. All right, let's go to twelve. Let's check out the merchandise. The merchandise of gold and silver and precious stones. Well, that's exactly what they came here for, right? Gold and silver, precious stones. They stole that from here and then shipped it worldwide. Okay? And of pearls and fine linen and purple and silk and scarlet and all thine wood and all manner of vessels of ivory and all manner of uh, vessels of the most precious wood and of brass and iron and marble. So that was a lot of things that they were getting here from ours, from our, our lands. Check this out. There's more. And cinnamon and odors, odors and ointments and frankincense and wine and oil and fine flour and wheat and beasts and sheep and horses and chariots and slaves and souls of men. And they were coming here and getting slaves, moving us from place to place within the first and within Americas and also, you know, down south um, in the islands and also to, uh, Europe and other other parts of the world. They were getting slaves from here, our people, and scattering them all over the place. See how this is all working out? They, they, they made all these um, these things here. They got all these things here, you know, all these commodities, and they took them worldwide. And all these nations are now upset because they're watching the destruction of the people that are here that have done all this stuff to us. See that? See how this all works? And it's not all necessarily going to be like this, the whole place is going to be destroyed. But the people who um, were had their hand in all the uh, atrocities that happened here to us, they're being judged. And all the other nations are seeing that. And like I said, and they're all, you know, in, in torments, depressed. Because like I said, the, the cash cow, the game is over. Okay, let's continue. And well, hold on. I want to look at that 16. Let me see here. The great city that was clothed in fine linen and purple. And that purple is like royalty. You know, these people became royal. They became royalty because they stole all of our resources. Okay, so they, they may put themselves up on, on a pedestal because of, they took all of the resources that we had and gave them to themselves and then, you know, made themselves as kings and, and, you know, queens and of the, of the entire world. Okay. Now let's go to Revelations 18, 20 through 24. And now it says, rejoice over her, thou heaven and ye holy apostles and prophets for the most high hath avenged you on her. So he's avenged you know, all the things that they did to us here. He's, he's put vengeance in his hands. And a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and cast it into the sea, saying, Thus with violence shall that great city Babylon be thrown down and shall be found no more at all. Okay. 22. And the voice of harpers and musicians and the and of pipers and trumpeters shall be heard no more at all in thee and no craftsmen of whatsoever craft he be, shall be found any more in thee. And the sound of a millstone shall be heard no more at all in thee. So this is like Hollywood, where all the music is made, you know, where all the movies are made, all the music, all the entertainment is all gone. And that's how you know it's this area right here, because that's where everything comes from. It, all, it originates here and goes everywhere else. The movies, the entertainment, the music, everything comes from here and goes out and all that stuff is going to be taken away. And that's part of the reason why the rest of the world is also mourning. You see how all this, all this works out. All right, let me continue. 23 and the light of a candle shall shine no more at all in thee and the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee for thy merchants were the great men of the earth for by thy sorceries were all nations deceived. 
So all the nations were deceived through the sorceries of this place. And again, uh, and in her was found the blood of prophets and of saints and of all that were slain upon the earth. And that's why, you know, they, they've been here killing uh, the prophets, the saints, all the most highest chosen people. And we were slain, slain. Okay. And that's why this place is, is getting ready to be destroyed. And that's why the other nations are turning its back on this place. It's just amazing to see because all this is all starting to just make so much sense. Now we're going to get into another book real quick. This is why I can only go into this for a little bit because it's just a lot of information. All right, we're going to get into real quick. Second Ezra chapter 11, verse 1. Because you're going to see how this all works together. Then I saw a dream, and behold, there came up from the sea an eagle, which had 12 feathered wings and three heads. This is kind of a, like a little th little picture here, kind of representation of that eagle with the three heads. I'm not going to get into all the feathers and everything else. I'm more so just going to concentrate on the three heads right now. Okay? Now, America is the first head that will die. Okay? And it was funny, I was listening to a guy trying to break this down. This is what happens when Gentiles try to take our book and then try to apply it to uh, <laughs> their worldview. Oh my God, it was hilarious. Dude was trying to say that the first head was Nazi Germany and that the other two heads were going to come later. They haven't come yet because Nazi Germany had like the, they, they committed the worst oppression ever with the 6 million Jews that they killed. He was the, because the heads represent oppression. And that uh, it has to be, uh, what does it have to, it has to do with um, oppressing the Jewish people? I was like, I just love how they just quickly just dismiss the hundreds of millions of our people who have been killed over all the last few hundred years. And then all, all they can talk about are the Jewish people and the six million. But they just quick to just forget about the hundreds of million that were killed when they, when they came here with the natives through the slave, uh, the slave trade here from here. You know, over to Europe, and even from Africa over to here, just the movement of our people, and just the, the utter, just the destruction, the annihilation of our people, hundreds of millions. But we're not going to talk about any of that. We're just going to talk about the six million. I was like, oh, well, this is exactly what happens when the Most High, you know, you guys get the books that the Most High never gave to you, and you try your best to try to make it fit your worldview. It just makes absolutely no sense. But I guess you know what do we expect though, huh? These have been the people that have been trying to teach us our Bible for all these years. Now, I showed you, I talked to you guys real quick about that uh, 2nd Edges 11 and 1. I'm going to read a little bit here from 2nd Edges 12, 23 through 26. And like I said, America is this first head that's going to be destroyed. Check this out of the three. And this is the last day's prophecy. So this is something that's supposed to happen in the end. That's exactly what's happening. Let's see here. 2nd Edges chapter 12, verse 23. In his last days shall the Most High raise up three kingdoms and renew many things therein, and they shall have the dominion of the earth. These three kingdoms have, are, they are supposed to have the whole dominion. They're going to have dominion over the entire earth. Okay? Now, let's see here. 24. And of those that dwell therein with much oppression, above all those that were before them, Therefore, are they called the heads of the eagle? Okay, so he was right about that right here. And of those that dwell therein with much oppression, above all those that were before them. Therefore, are they called the heads of the eagle? Okay, so they're supposed to be the most oppressive. That is correct. But who are they oppressing? That's the main thing. Okay, 25. For these are they that shall accomplish his wickedness, and that shall finish his last end. And whereas thou sawest that the great head appeared no more, it signifieth that one of them shall die upon his bed and yet with pain. And what's funny is this guy was trying to talk about, oh, well, it's Hitler because Hitler supposedly died in his bed. It's like, oh my gosh, man. You know, that, it, that can have many different interpretations, dying on his bed. I look at it more like this. The other nations, the Edomites that had brought us here, lived here. This was their bed. This was their resting place. This was their their home for the last, you know, few hundred years. 
they're going to be destroyed here in their bed and their resting in their resting place. Doesn't mean necessarily a man. This is like a group, it's like a whole nation of people that are going to be destroyed where they rested their head. They rested their head on our land. When the Mosai says that your time is up in this certain area, he's going to destroy you there. Okay. So let me see here. <laughs> and then it says 27 for the two that remaineth shall be slain with the sword. I will get into the other two that are left in another video. Well, I wanted to get on this first one today. I wanted to talk about this one right here. Okay. This three headed Eagle and what it represents. All right. Check this out. And this is the last day's prophecy. So does something have to happen in the last day? See, what's, what's crazy with the other nations is they're acting like all of these prophecies have to happen after they're raptured and taken away. They refuse to look at the fact that these things have already happened and they've already ran its course. That's the difference between like, uh, you know, these Gentiles trying to uh, interpret the scriptures because they're trying to make it seem like all these things are going to happen, but after they're gone. And all people who don't believe like they do are all going to be destroyed but they're going to make it out of here safe and sound. Check this out right here. This is a, a post I saw here. I was kind of looking to do a little research. You got three cities. You got the city of London, which represents the finance. You got the Vatican, which are, is the religion. And you got Washington, D.C., which equals the military. All three are sovereign and are better known as the, what this guy calls them, the axis of evil or three cities. Uh, that's what he calls them. Okay, so you got an obelisk in all three of these places. Got the obelisk right there in the city of London. Not any, uh, not any part of England though. You have the Vatican. You have Vatican City, but not any part of Italy. And you have Washington D.C., which is not any part of America. And you got these three cities who control the entire world, just like I talked about in Second Ezra. So you got corruption is everywhere in every area of our lives. The axis of evil, the obelisk, Washington, D.C., Vatican City, and City of London. Get me out of here. Okay. So you got the trinity of globe, a globalist control. So you got, you got your religious part right there with the Vatican. You got the finance right there with London. You got the military part right there with the United States or, or Washington, D.C. All three are separate states completely independent of their respective countries. So there's your three heads right there who rule the entire world. It's amazing, isn't it? Because this was foretold thousands of years ago. It was told to Esdras thousands of years ago. And it was actually talked, it was talked a little bit with Daniel, but then Ezra was told that he's going to get the rest of the inter interpretation. But I'll get on into that in another video. Okay, so let me read this one more time. Now, let me see here. It says, 2nd Ezra chapter 12, verses 23 to 26. In his last days shall the Most High raise up three kingdoms and renew many things therein, and they shall have the dominion of the earth. Those are three kingdoms right here. And they have dominion over the earth. They run everything. And of those that dwell therein with much oppression, above all those that were before them. Okay, this is a worldwide oppression through these three, okay? The, therefore are they called the heads of the eagle. Here's your heads of the eagle right here. For these are they that shall accomplish his wickedness. Okay, these three cities accomplish the wickedness of the evil one, okay? And that shall finish his last end. So it's gonna, this, these are the ones at the end. And whereas thou sawest that the great head appeared no more, it signifieth that one of them shall die upon his bed, and yet with pain. So, one of these three is going to die first. Now, what you look at is when you look at Revelation 18, it talks about how these merchants that were afar off were watching the destruction of one of these heads. Well, if you look at the Vatican uh, City of London and the Vatican City are pretty close together, the one that's far off would be D.C., and, one, and that one as far off is also the one that's dwelling in our land. See how that works? 
So it would make sense. That, and, and it talks about how, in, you know, the one where they got the gold from, the silver from, all these resources from. They're not going to get that anymore. So that would be here in our land. See how the puzzle is all starting to come together. Talks about how you're not going to have the music anymore. You're not going to have all that entertainment coming anymore. That isn't coming from London or the Vatican. That's coming from D.C. area. This continent over here. See how that's all working out? So the first head is going to be taken out. It's going to be the one in D.C. And that's why you see all these nations turning their back on this place. Because they know that our punishment is just about up and the Most High is about to um, reclaim his land and his people. Let me see here. Because now, uh oh, got missing some of my notes. Where did my notes go? Because we're going to actually be uh, taken care of here in our land. We're going to be. Um, let me look here real fast. We're going to be protected while this uh, dis destruction is going on here at our land first. And let me find it really quick. Checking my notes here because I have a lot of notes. Hmm. Hold on. I know I wrote it down and now I'm looking for it. Let's see. Okay, here we go. Now, while this destruction is happening here, we're going to be protected, just like what happened. You know, if you go back to the second edge, it talks about how he's going to uh, bring back the plagues of Egypt as before. What else is going to happen here first? Okay. So, and what happened during that time of the plagues? We were protected. Right? And that's what's going to happen again. But let's read this first. In second Ezra chapter 12, verse 34. Okay. It says, for the rest of my people shall he deliver with mercy those that have been preserved upon my borders. And he shall make them joyful until the coming of the day of judgment, whereof I have spoken unto thee from the beginning. So his people are going to be protected within their border, his borders. His borders are going to be here in the, in the chosen land, the chosen land, in our inheritance. And then we're going to be taken care of and watched over by the angels safely until the time of judgment begins. And we're going to get into that because that has the, the whole time of judgment has to deal with what's going to go on between the other two heads that are left. And like I said, I can't get into all that in this video, but I will get into that um, on the next couple of videos. But this will kind of give you a chance to kind of do some more research and, you know, maybe share some information in the comment board if you guys know some of this information um, and kind of see what you guys come up with as well. This is amazing because, like I said, now you're seeing there's three heads. One head's going to be killed first. The one's going to be killed first is the one that are in, in our lands. And in, in our lands, we're going to be preserved while all hell is breaking loose worldwide. And he's going to put uh, the angels in charge of us. And it talks about how we're going to be protected in our land, you know, during this time. Now you get into your whole Gog, Magog uh, time and them coming against us uh, at the end. Um, and that happening actually over here. They talk about it happening over there in uh, the Valley of Megiddo, which is not that big of an area to have almost the, the vast majority of the uh, world's military. But you know what is a good area? The plains that are here, the plains, of the middle part of America, which is a huge area where they could bring a whole lot of uh, military equipment that, it, that could actually go down right there where they try to show up and fight, fight against the most high right there. So, like I said, I read that to you right now, and I want to read about, I'm going to read Psalms 91. Psalms 91, and how he's going to protect us. And we're going to see the destruction happening all around us. Why would that be? Because that would happen here, because we're surrounded with Gentiles. We're surrounded with people who are going to have to pay the price for what happened to our people. And they're still here. And the Most High is going to destroy them, and we're going to see it. That doesn't mean he's going to destroy everything that means he's going to destroy the people that are on our land that he does not want here psalms 91 i'm gonna read the whole chapter he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadows of the almighty 
I will say of the Most High, He is my refuge and my fortress. My power in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with His feathers, and under His wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee, to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion, the adder, the young lion and the dragon shalt not shalt thou trample under feet. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Only the woke will understand what you see right here. The lion trampling down the eagle. In the book of Enoch, it talks about how the eagle, you know, is in charge of all these animals and beasts that have been uh, attacking and destroying God's sheep. And that's what you see here is the, the lion coming out of the thicket to face the eagle. You know? It's just amazing how the Most High is now bringing this information together. He said there's a three heads. One's going to die first. You saw the three cities. Which one fits the one in Revelations 18 about being destroyed? Most High has put us in, in captivity before. Did he destroy the whole land? No, he destroyed the people that were on our land that were oppressing us. This is exactly what happened with in the book, well, in Exodus and during Egypt. They were oppressing us, would not let us go. The Most High, you know, destroyed them. He's going to do the same thing. He's going to destroy all three heads of the eagle, but he's going to destroy this one here in D.C. first. He's going to protect the, his people that he's chosen in his borders. These are all things I found in Scripture. You just putting the puzzle pieces together. And then the other two, I'm going to get into what's going to happen, what's going to be happening during the other two, but those people who are over there are going to see what's happening over here, the destruction, you know, how the Most High is going to, uh, he's going to get vengeance. He's going to see the vengeance that's going to be weighed on them for what they did to his people, for what they did to his land. And you can see which one, which uh, of those three cities fits, you know, Revelations 18. You know, all the stuff that they took from us, they sold our sold our people. They sold. They took our gold, silver. You know, they took all of our labor. They took all of our resources, and that's why it talks about how we're going to come back with great substance because we're going to get all of that back. Okay, and like I said right here, only the woke will understand what's going on. Many people will try to break this down, but they will not. They refuse to admit that we're the people, and that we're the ones the Most High is going to protect. Most High is going to protect us here in our lands. The other nations are going to see that. And eventually they're going to be fighting with each other. And eventually when the Most High comes back, they're going to turn and try to fight against him and our lands. So they're going to try to come over here. And this is what your Gog and Magog wars are going to be. But the Most High is going to be protecting his people with the, himself and his angels. I said it's, all, it's all starting to make much more sense now. As we come to the end, you know, if things are going to be, Most High is going to give us more clarity. He's going to send the Holy Spirit, and she's going to clear up many things. She's going to bring remembrance back to her people. That's why this book only belongs in the hands of the chosen of the uh, seed line 
of Jacob. That's why when they try to break it down, they can't do it. That's why at the end, you know, they're going to say, they're going to come back and they're going to be saying things like this. They're going to be saying things like this right here in Jeremiah 16 and 19. O Lord, my strength and my fortress and my refuge, in the day of affliction, the Gentiles shall come unto thee from the ends of the earth and shall say, Surely our fathers have inherited lies, vanity, and things wherein, wherein there is no profit. The other nations are, have inherited lies. And now the Most High has set his men back here to uh, clarify what's really going on in order to give clarification and call his people back. And like I said, there'll be some more videos coming shortly uh, to give more clarification on what's gonna happen with the other two heads that are left. But at least this one kind of get us a, a, a good jump start on some information and a chance to study and kind of look at things maybe through a, a different lens. All praises to the Most High, Yahweh. Again, acknowledgement to the um, earthly mother, who is wisdom, who is the Holy Spirit, also, acknowledge it to Yahweh Shai. Have a great day. Shalom.